Hey everybody. So shorter hiatus than I thought. <laughs> I was gonna take a break. Then I decided not to. Anyway, this is uh, our next project, and it should should be a little uh, well. There's a lot less lumber on this than there was on the Skyhawk. Uh, this is Waddell Williams Type 44. And uh, when they were building those in the 30s, uh, they would, um, Woodell Williams Company would um, get with the different pilots and sort of, uh, not really build the spec, but they would make adjustments. And, and um, this airplane is one that was built for Roscoe Turner. This is the Turner or the Gilmore Oil, rather, uh, Red Lion Racer. Uh, that's what Dumas calls it. They don't even reference Waddell Williams, but that's the manufacturer of the actual aircraft. Gilmore Oil Company was a sponsor, and Roscoe Turner was their pilot. Anyway, um, as you can see, I've got the uh, fuselage framed up which is what I typically do first. I've got a cockpit floor installed and that again is just the birch plywood. And what I typically do to fit that is uh, cut one out of cardstock first. Make sure it fits in there. And with the birch ply, which is pretty flexible wood, um, it's possible to uh, bend it up a little bit. I cut the grain sideways this direction so that I could roll it down and into this forward section and then slide it back into position. And that was done by first practicing with the paper to make sure the paper would do it. Um, once I knew that I could do it with this, um, it was relatively simple. I just had to shave this down a little bit. Uh, the paper can do a few things that the wood can't, but uh, that was pretty close. In the end, it's uh, it's installed, and we'll do the side walls with cardstock as we've done uh, on camera before. Um, this has a much smaller cockpit area, so there's not a whole lot of room to work with in there. But we'll do what we can. Uh, obviously, the panel is important. We've got a decent-looking panel, a seat, stick pilot figure and then we'll go from there and see what else we want to add or need to add. As far as the motor goes, I'm not sure I can use Williams Brothers on this. I don't know if I can make that engine small enough and yet because the crankcase I can't shrink that and the crankcase on those is fairly big. Uh, I don't have uh, I don't have my other one out here. Uh, but you'll have to trust me on that. And the other thing is, uh, again, to make the Williams Brothers motors fit, um, I'd have to do a lot of cutting, uh, like I did on to no avail on the uh, on the other model on the um, Air Express. Remember on that one, I have that cowling here. Uh, the cowling was made essentially the same way. And then what I ended up uh, doing to try and get the motor to fit inside of it was cutting away all of this material here, lining the inside of, of this with a uh, 1 32nd balsa, infilling it, infilling all of these as I do, as I'm doing here, and then sanding sanding that out as, as much as I could, removing as much material as I could to get this as thin as possible. As you can see that, uh, if you remember, that still wasn't enough to fit an engine because of the shape of this cowling. This cowling is not round, it's oblong, egg-shaped, 
and it's just there was no way to fit the motor in from the back end. The front end is round. Um, if I could have opened it up like a clamshell, I could have put the motor in there. But and this ended up just being the vacuum form motor that came with the, uh, you know, pre as part of the open end of this cowling. And on this one, they didn't. Gamma didn't model the cylinders into it. It's just this void and that just doesn't work for me. There's nothing I can do with that. So this will all be cut out of here. And again, I think Park Flyer plastics will probably have an engine I can that'll fit in here, a motor that'll fit in here. And I just have to look up and see which one I bought for the Stinson project, the Stinson Reliant. I, I believe that is the one that'll fit in here. So you can see we got a little bit of our work cut out trying to <coughs> establish the accessories that I need for this model. But this part here, this is the cowling, it just gets cut out here at this first demarcation line. And then that plastic piece just fits over the nose of this. And that's how the cowlings are made on, on most of these. Um, radial engine Dumas aircraft models. This one has a different feature on the back side of it, extending off of the back of this. They have you using cardstock. There's extensions for that. And actually go this way. So the forward end of this is is wrapped with this plastic piece and then the balance of it is wrapped with these cardstock pieces and then this is where the cutout is for the leading edge of the wing. Uh, again I don't think I'll be using that um, but you know stay tuned I, I never know exactly what I'm going to do until I start doing it. If you watched uh, the videos, you know that I'll discuss uh, a certain plan or an idea about how to do something, and then if watching the video, you'll see that I do something different or or not. It just depends sometimes on <clears throat> you know how it goes. You try the thing maybe that I'm talking about, and it doesn't. It just doesn't look right, or it won't work. To my satisfaction or some other issue pops up and you try something else. It's different than what <clears throat> what I talk about in previous videos. So that's you know that's gonna continue to happen. I, I don't know. I can't stop talking about ideas that I have and I can't stop trying them and or failing miserably. <laughs> And having to do something different. So that's just going to go on. That's going to continue. But here's our airplane as it sits. This actually goes this way uh, because this is former two and this is number one. Number one faces out. Number two attaches to what was number three. You also see that I've, I've sistered on and, and extended uh, the nose of this airplane and this time only by about 316. Is that 316? Yes, I think it is. 316. Um, and there was a couple of reasons for that. Um, one is I like to bullnose when I have a, a cowling um, mounted radial engine. I like to bullnose the front of the fuselage because that is typically what uh, what that was, what, how they were configured, and that was for heat dissipation. Um, a, a blunt nose like this would just throw heat back into the engine and if when they bull nose that the airflow coming through the engine and, and around the vents of the cylinders <clears throat> would hit much less resistance and be able to blow uh, past the motor and the other reason is since I'm I'm most likely going to hog this out anyway I like the cowling to fit over the nose, not not butt up against it like this, but to actually slide over. So what I'll be doing is 
at at least hogging it out to this to this and the way we'll do that is we'll just trace once this is all shaped not not bull nosed yet but but straight uh, I'll trace it onto the back of the cowling uh, bulkhead number two this is one again I keep flipping this over trace it onto bulkhead two here and then carefully slice that out and then sand it until it's large enough to slide over the nose of this airplane just to buy about an eighth of an inch maybe a little more than an eighth of an inch so if, if I'm since I'm doing that I needed to extend this so that I wasn't sliding this back and into the wing too soon uh, you know obviously I could deepen the cutout you know for the wing or make other adjustments but I wanted instead to um, to create that space on the end of the fuselage you know that that would allow me to push this back without changing any other of the dimensions of the model right so that's why that was done also I just I I, I like that I don't know I like to have a bit more material on the nose uh, I pretty much always pad and it's for a couple reasons sometimes on the model kit they don't have the firewall in the right position other cases it's like I just described where I want to slide the cowling over the nose of the airplane and um, and where it's a cosmetic thing where I need to have room for that bull nosing effect which you, you just don't have if you're right up against here and you start sanding a bull nose into that you're you're really making a, a, a thin material thin wall here that it could, that could break down so for all those reasons um, I typically add a, at least a 3 16 pad I mean not always this thick. Sometimes it's a th three thirty seconds pad. It's a thinner pad, but always something. And in uh, the case of the Air Express, it was almost three quarters. But that was because of the engine placement um, and the, the variable uh, of the, the half engine. They had vacuum formed into their cowling and the thickness of an actual scale motor to project the motor out into the cowling. I needed more. Of a firewall, a, a longer extended fuselage. They just they had cut the firewall off off of that model basically for the purposes of their their method. And I just that was a restoration actually. So, <clears throat> right. Anyway, this is where we're at um, on this model. Again, it's not a very big one. Uh, I will I will be using the kit decals for this. I'll be using the Dumas markings for this airplane because they, they are complete and they're, they're not bad and as long as I don't make any mistakes laying them on we should be okay. They should lay on okay. <coughs> Hopefully. Right so on this uh, model the landing gear is actually incorporated into the wing which is nice. I don't have to be concerned with having the wire sticking out of the fuselage while I'm trying to smooth it up. Um, now that'll make it a little bit different when I'm actually working on the wing, but um, for now I'm, that, that's okay. Uh, I'll, have, I'll be able to do the fuselage. The other thing about this fuselage here, as you can see, there's nothing under here until after the wing is laid in. So this model has a belly pan under the wing and for that reason um, th there will be more shaping happening around this area after the wing is installed. I'll try to get it as smooth obviously as I can at this point but laying that uh, wing on there m making the fairings for it, the, the wing root fairings and then assembling that belly pan to it and with that there are a couple of formers that lay across the underside of the wing and some stringers have to be laid on and then that has to be infilled and then that has to be sanded and shaped and smooth and fared into this both the leading edge uh, uh, leading uh, nose of the fuselage and this uh, trailing edge wing area of the lower fuselage so there's going to have to be some careful uh, shaping and sanding going on after this is already prepped and after the wing is already prepped and that's always a bit risky you run the risk of you know 
sanding grooves in, into things that you don't want to sand them into and having to use more filler than you should and all that stuff. So every every kit has its challenges and this, this one will have its its own set even though it's a smaller model uh, than the Skyhawk it, it may actually you know it could take longer just because of the different uh, the variables of the airframe and and the way I do this modeling with the infilling and for other reasons so we'll hope for the best though we'll try to get this one going now I've got some other interesting projects coming up so I mentioned that I found uh, a Cleveland models kit of the Boeing F4B um, and I'll try and put some pictures of that up on the channel um, and when I get to it when I get the kit I'll I'll do it at that time too I'll I'll put something on the my laptop some images there and then I'll just record those so you can see what that looks like what, what I'm trying to build there so that's coming and then I also have a, a boat project and the boat thing um, you know I have I have grandkids and one of the things that I do when I build these is sometimes you know I build for them I had something to hang in a in the room here where they sleep when they spend the night or you know sometimes it's it's something they can take home uh, but the boat thing is, is something for them to play with in the tub or if they go to some you know, friend's house and um, somebody with a pool they can play with it in a pool and so there's a there's going to be a boat project and that's all I'll say about that I don't know if it's going to be motorized or RC or any of that stuff at any at any given point in time. Initially, it's just going to be a, a floaty thing, something for the for the tub. Um, but at some point, either that project or another one will will be, uh, you know, a radio control light up, a little bit of everything boat. This one is kind of a dry run for me to build a boat and see how it see how it looks, how much goes into it how much room there is in this one for, for that kind of gear if, if it has even has room for that stuff. It comes with the running hardware but nothing else. It would need a motor, a speed controller, batteries, um, and on a, a radio receiver and all that stuff and I don't right now I'm not going to lay out for all that. 